Where is he? Where are you? Skull Rock. Uh, do you know it? Hello, everybody. This is Stacy broadcasting live from Skull Rock, and I am joined by... Hello, I am Megan, your co-host for Skull Rock Broadcast. Hey, how are you? I'm good, darling. How are you doing? Doing okay, doing okay. Just Sunday morning recovery mode. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know all too well about that. So I got to tell you, I am pretty pumped about today's episode. I'm sure you are as well. Absolutely. So excited to talk about our main topic of the day. <laughs> yep. Our number one, um, Mr. Joe Keery, who has played our beloved Steve, Steve Harrington. Steve Harrington. He's the best. And unfortunately, our original plan was last week, we were going to talk about him and Joseph Quinn. And then we just realized that these two men, they have such a filmography that it takes a while to get through it all. So we knew that we weren't going to have enough time and we didn't want to cram in Mr. Carey. So we decided to give him his own separate episode. Yes, absolutely. So we had a great time talking about Joseph Quinn last week. Hopefully everybody enjoyed that episode. If you haven't listened to our first three episodes, make sure you go back and do that. But yeah, we're going to dive in and talk about Joe Keery today. But it is one year today since you met the other Joe. So that's exciting. Isn't that crazy to think like it was January 7th? I was down in New Orleans and I met uh, Joseph Quinn. And it honestly, it feels just like yesterday. I still remember those long ass lines. But I have to really say the reason why they were so long was because Joe took his time talking to his fans. And you know, I got to tell you, I luckily had really good experiences meeting him. I met him on both Saturday and Sunday. And um, my first time ever interacting with him was for the photo op that was before the autographs. And I remember I was waiting in line, getting all giddy with my friend um, Brandy and Jeanette. And then I met him. And the thing was, we were having like several photos each with him so we were trying to make sense of it we were like okay well Stacy's getting three photos with him and then Jeanette steps in she gets one photo with him and then Stacy you stay there because then Brandy's going to come in and take a photo with the three of you and then you step out so it's a big Rubik's Cube mess so I'm standing there with him and it was like meeting Santa Claus I was just in complete awe it just <laughs> staring up at him like wow you're real. And we took our photos and you could tell the photographer was a little like confused being like, oh, so she's staying there as we were switching out. So before Brandy came over, there was an awkward like 30 seconds of us just standing together. And I just went, uh, Jesus Christ, I'm in every photo. And he started cracking <laughs> up. And he went, yeah, you are. And he rubbed my back. So basically we're married now. <laughs> and um, it, we just were cracking up. And luckily, like, I started nervously laughing. So the photographer captured it, us just laughing. And it's just, it's probably my favorite photo. But he was just such a sweetheart and just so, so, so friendly. And um, I know that he's got a convention in Oregon. And I cannot wait to hear fans talking about their experiences with him because he's definitely one of the friendliest, sweetest people you could meet. Yeah, I'm so excited for some more people to get to meet him. And I love convention days, even the ones where I'm not there because I just like sitting at home and mm -hmm. watching all of the new photos of him with fans come in. It's so fun. And yeah, it's been a little while since he's done a convention. So we're yeah. excited to see that. And also, speaking of that, Joe Keery, mm -hmm. he was not doing conventions for a while there, but he just did start doing a few more. So we're hoping that maybe eventually he'll be doing some in the States as well, because wasn't he in Germany? He was in Germany in April, and then he was supposed to do, I think, South Wales. But due to filming schedules, he had to bow out last second, which really sucked. 
I just really hope at least maybe with season five coming closer and the show coming to an end, he will do some conventions because A, he's like my unicorn with wanting to meet convention wise, but also like, could you imagine a photo op with him and Joseph Quinn? I would die. No, I think I would like ascend. <laughs> And we also wanted to mention that we've been getting great feedback about yes. the podcast. So we really enjoy everyone telling us what they think and letting us know how they enjoyed the episode. So make sure that you do reach out if you're listening and either comment wherever you're listening to, leave a review, or you can kind of hit us up on social media and let us know what you think. We have had a couple people ask if we are going to rewatch the show prior mm -hmm. to season five coming out. And we do think that that would be a really super fun way to get back into the show for everyone. And we can go episode by episode, rewatch and deep dive just so that everybody is prepared when season five comes out. That would be a lot of fun, I think. Yeah, I agree. Definitely, you know, restarting the adventure right from the very beginning. I know it's something I love to do, but it would definitely be interesting for us to kind of go through each episode. And like we said, maybe there's things that you never picked up on before or something you want to discuss, any theories or, you know, guesses that you have. We definitely would love to do that with you guys. Yeah, I know we both pick up on new things every single time we watch. So... I figured that I would start out with a little bit of an admission. So I need to Ooh, admit something. Okay. So, confession time. <laughs> yes, a confession. It probably was until season four came out that I liked Steve Harrington as a character, but I did not love him as a character. Really? So it really took season four for me to kind of fall deeply for him and when I first watched the first three seasons I was all about Nancy and Jonathan mm -hmm. and I still do enjoy them yeah but I just you know Jonathan was like the underdog and you really want to like root for the underdog and like you said I was okay with Nancy and Steve still being together at the end of season one but I was like, oh, but she and Jonathan had such good chemistry. And I thought that kind of Steve, some of the conversations that Nancy had with Jonathan about not really wanting that traditional family role like her mom had with her dad um, and kind of wanting something different for herself, like I could kind of relate to that. And it seemed to me like... Steve was not the best choice for her and I think I wanted her to go more towards Jonathan which I still hold to that that Steve's not the best choice for Nancy yeah. but it just like it it took me a while to kind of like be invested in Steve as a character on his own as mm -hmm. well and not just like related to the relationship between um, Nancy and Jonathan. So I think season two did a good job of that, of like giving him something else to do with yeah. the kids. And I loved that. And then season three, he was just, you know, such a cool setting sail <laughs> on that ocean of flavor. Yeah. 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 But it, I was, I was kind of into the Nancy and Jonathan storyline a little bit more. I always love a good like love story. Mm -hmm. So I, it took me to season four to be like, okay, this character is in his own right a really cool, um, I don't know, impressive character and is so, like, pivotal to the sh success of the show, I think. Yeah. Now, what would you say, like, what out of season four made him finally stand out to you? That's a good question. Um, I think being the one to kind of jump off of the boat mm -hmm. and like, you know, in the, the dive, like do the yeah. dive, like that was one of the big moments of like, he's like such a 
heroic kind of character um but like a tragic hero in a yeah. way i think the steve and robin like buddy comedy like yes. friendship was really amped up in season four like you had they had it in season three but in season yeah. three they were doing the weird thing where it was like steve was kind of falling for robin yeah yep. and and he had those like confusing feelings towards her and i think it was refreshing to then just see them in the friendship that they've developed outside of like oh is this a romantic thing like that yeah that was really cool and correct me if i'm wrong but didn't maya kind of want that want her character to be more than just a love interest for steve harrington from what I heard originally, it was written that she was going to be Steve's love interest, and she brought it up. She was like, well, what if we made my character gay, and what if it was more of a brother-sister, best friends relationship? And even though Joe and Maya have insanely, insanely amazing chemistry, I like the route that they went. Because I felt Absolutely, like yeah. instead of Steve's storyline just being about his love life from what we know it seems like he is an only child and his parents aren't around and it looks as though they kind of gave him like the sister he always wanted and somebody that was age appropriate that was his friend and i just really love that and they kind of just subtly put it in where he's shocked to find out that robin doesn't have a license even though he drives her to school every day and if you look at the family video like ours he like gets up an hour or two before a shift to give her a ride. And then he's shocked, you know, in March that she doesn't, doesn't even have, have her a license. driver's license. Yeah. <laughs> it just goes to show you like how close they are and stuff. And I love all the memes of them being like every season should be them like starting a new job and then getting fired and stuff. I just find it really their dynamic just so well done that even though they would have made a really cute couple, I like this route. 10 times more oh you yeah know? totally me too and I think I think that is kind of one of the things that really made me enjoy his character that friendship also the like the jealousy he had of Eddie like oh my god yeah Justin's friend like I just loved that so much and obviously we talk about at the end our other kind of like <laughs> head cannons and mm -hmm. things like that for those characters but in canon, in like the actual show, just the the jealousy of oh Eddie, your new best friend because he plays your nerdy game. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the friendship then he develops with Eddie, and yeah. where Eddie's giving him like some validation finally. I feel like Eddie was like all of us, like Steve, you are a good person. Yeah, <laughs> something that he clearly is. He's used to being told that he's bullshit. And yeah. he's being told that, like, Henderson worships you. Because if you notice, like, Dustin's a little more comfortable and a little more sassy with Steve this time around. And instead, Eddie's being like, no, this kid worships you. He loves you. And then kind of, like, says the whole thing about how the girls jumped off first to go save him and stuff. And Steve Harrington, even though he's rich and he supposedly gets all the girls, he's actually a really good dude. And I just love that little moment with the light bright when he's like, Jesus, this kid needs to get his ego in check. And he's like, it's, it's his just tone, tone, right? right? <laughs> Tell you, th those are Dustin's divorced parents just kind of have this wonderful relationship with this kid who looks up to them, but in different ways. It's so well done. Yeah. So those were, I think, definitely the big things. So his friendship with Robin, his friendship with Eddie, um, his heroics and mm -hmm. just you know like tearing the bats off of him and oh it was so good but now i can appreciate going back and watching from the beginning like i've talked about a little bit before on the podcast the whole arc of steve's character yeah now that season four exists so because they could have gone with the root of what they were originally going to do was him being like the jerky james spader typical 80s 
boyfriend and instead you know joe keery is just such a charming actor and the duffer brothers are such good writers i like that you see glimpses of him actually being a decent guy like him cleaning off um the sign in front of the movie theater that tommy spray painted him deciding to go back and help nancy and jonathan with the demogorgon even though he's scared shitless um even that epic moment in season three where billy's camaro is racing towards nancy and he plows the cadillac into it it just goes to show you that this guy has a really good heart and he's clearly he's got his flaws and stuff you know and it's his friends that are the ones that are like no you're actually a really you know good guy you know you care for others you're willing to get you know the shit kicked out of you basically to protect the people that you care about so watching that growth throughout four seasons it's incredible honestly best car character arc i think yeah yeah totally and i think like you mentioned that was that was joe keery like we talked about last week like the impact that eddie munson had on like the world was because of joseph quinn and who steve harrington became as a character was because of the talent of Joe Keery yeah. and his acting in season one and making that character who it then became. Like, I think it it opened those doors for him to kind of develop as a character. So absolutely. It's really amazing how the writing and then the acting kind of mesh together to kind of like for the evolution of this character. So, and I think that goes with, lots of the cast members oh um, yeah and we'll really be excited to deep dive about other um other cast members in the future too we probably won't have to spend a whole episode on each of them but yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're clearly you know these guys are our favorites but you know i just think the writing like you said and acting of joe keery steve harrington i could never see anybody play him besides him and I say to people all the time, like, yes, you know, Robin figure out the whole music cue and whatnot and in season four. But if Steve had it checked on Max in the cemetery, she would have already lifted and she would have died. And that's something that, you know, they don't address, but he's yeah. the reason basically she was saved. And just that big epic moment in season three where he kind of like admits his feelings to robin they still have the drugs in their system and he's telling her well i think i met somebody who's better for me and he kind of pours his heart out and this was 1985 at the time kind of a scary time for somebody to come out especially in a midwestern town and when robin says it you know the acting of maya is incredible because she looks so terrified and he doesn't even skip a beat instead going like oh yeah you know tammy thompson she's cute and all but she's a total dud showing that he supports her when basically he was rejected yet again and it just goes to show you what a really good guy he is and i think like you said a lot of that is joe keary's acting yeah because you want to root for this guy no matter yeah. what totally no that scene was amazing that's one of my favorite scenes in the show i think as a whole and both of them their acting in that scene is mm -hmm. just so emotional and raw and believable and yeah. even in the time period and yeah it's amazing so what was the first role or other project of joe keery's that you ever watched other than stranger things um so clearly obviously it was stranger things to start off with i thought it was really cool that um he's from newburyport massachusetts that's about maybe a half an hour away from me so i thought it was really cool that he's a massachusetts resident and you see him definitely visit home a lot and go into Boston for like the Stanley Cup and whatnot. So I kind of like knew him through that because a lot of people are like, oh, you know, the guy who plays Steve is from around here. But the first thing I ever, besides Stranger Things, that I watched him in was actually Spree. 
And it was November 2020, and I rarely do a blind buy when I buy physical media, but I just, you know, loved his acting in Stranger Things so much. I was like, well, this actually looks like a cool concept that there's an Uber driver and he's going nuts and he's killing people for social media. And I bought it, and usually I hate found footage or, you know, those kind of movies that are supposedly shot just on camera or on a cell phone but this was such a satire and it actually like really was kind of a dark twisted comedy showing just how desperate people are for the likes and you know the credibility of social media and he does such a good job still playing it charming but clearly something is insanely wrong with this guy and he plays a psychopath so, so well that I could actually see him doing darker roles like this in the future because he just something about him like he's got the kind of face that you want to trust and that you would be easily fooled by. But really, he's a complete psychopath. And the movie itself is very, very well written and it's got so many iconic moments in it. But um, I had a ball watching spree and I thought it was such a good career move because he said in an interview right before doing the movie, he was being offered a lot of like romantic comedies and like teen dramas. And he kind of went against the grain and did this really dark role of this unhinged guy who, you know, is just a perfect example of just how sad and twisted you know, people are about social media and screen time and whatnot, but it, it had to be spree and I was blown away by his performance in it. What about oh, you? Yeah. Yeah. I've seen spree and I loved it. I loved it too. It's so dark and scary in a way mm -hmm. and, but so impressive just the, the whole experience of watching it because a lot of times it's like a live feed and you've got mm -hmm. like the comments on the side and like the reactions coming in and it's very realistic and like you said a little bit scary that like kind of be imagining that this could kind of actually happen like mm -hmm. it's very it's scary that it's so realistic so <laughs> I really enjoyed him in that and I do agree that like I'm so glad that he kind of went in that direction and the the roles that he chooses yes. to do are so unique and kind of different and that he didn't kind of like ride that Steve Harrington dreamboat like and yep. just do like the boring you can tell that like he enjoys roles that are more of a challenge and that um kind of like get him a little deeper in his acting and it's a lot of characters that um are I don't know, like not necessarily like the easiest to like, but like you do like them, even though you shouldn't like them. I think the first thing I watched, though, after Stranger Things um, season four, and I wanted to kind of see more of his projects was probably Free Guy. So, oh, yes. Yep. I really, really enjoyed Free Guy. I think. I don't know that I really saw too much about that movie when it was first coming out. And yeah. I feel like that's kind of a shame because it's like definitely underrated. Like I was like, what even is this? But it's like a huge kind of like blockbuster type movie with like the action and Ryan Reynolds. And I know it's directed by Sean uh, Levy, the one of the directors of um, Stranger Things. And it looked like they had such a fun time with making that movie. And it's, it's like a wild ride and I won't, spoil anything but like joe's character is like you know Pretty one of crucial. the main, yeah. one of the main characters in the movie and um and he does such a good job with that like because he's just this like nerdy computer guy like <laughs> but you really like want to root for him and um yeah. and yeah it's it's a great movie yeah free guy was a ton of fun um i believe like it came out either during the pandemic or still in 2021 when like movie theaters were still trying to find their way. And I ended up watching it when it came to streaming. And I just loved all of his scenes with uh, Taika Waititi because they just bounced off each other so well. And, you know, we're not used to seeing Joe in these kind of big, like you said, blockbuster movies, but he just does such a good job. And 
just plays such a charming character that you can't help but root for him. So yeah, Free Guy was definitely a great project of his. I love that one. And I think that's streaming on Disney Plus if anybody oh, awesome. wants to watch it. I don't know where um, Spree is kind of streaming right now. It was on Hulu for a while. I believe it's got taken off. I don't think it's streaming anywhere right now. But keep your eyes open, guys. And it's actually even worth the price to rent it because it's that good. Another one that I saw was um, Henry Gamble's Birthday Party. That's an independent um, project. I actually watched it for the first time last spring. And it actually has a really great cast. And it all takes place in one day over the course of this 17-year-old boy's birthday party that happens to be a pool party. And his parents are heavily involved in the church. And it just, it speaks volumes on how people who are heavily involved in the church, you know, how sometimes people like that can be hypocrites, that, you know, they use their religion to act as though, you know, they're high and mighty when actually they might be terrible people. And they're, you know, quick to judge while other people who do believe in God, who are involved in the church, are actually really well-liked people that actually are welcoming But it's interesting because it shows, you know, a lot of social commentary on um, homosexuality, sexuality, and religion. And first of all, the soundtrack is banging. Yeah, it's really so well done. I highly, highly recommend the soundtrack to anybody. Um, And they use uh, sometimes, you know, the same band over and over again, but all their songs are incredible. And Jill plays the best friend character, not a big part, but um, definitely the uh, opening is very, very iconic. Um, I won't spoil anything, but yeehaw. And um, he definitely provides some comedic relief, but definitely he has some um, really uh, some fun, memorable, fun and memorable scenes for sure. (laughs) Yeah, we'll leave it at that memorable moments. But um, I would recommend it to anybody if you're just a film lover in general. You know, it's it's a drama, but it doesn't take itself too seriously. But it's actually a really beautifully yeah. made movie. What did you think about it? Yeah, the cinematography, the cinematography is really cool. I think a lot of the like underwater kind of like swimming in the pool was very impressive. And just like it just had like a vibe to it, I think. Like, like you said, it's all over the course of one day and like the pool party and like it just has that like kind of like pool party vibe like but then it gets a little deeper and there's some really like emotional like moments towards the end like with just people coming to terms with things and family and and unexpected I think some some unexpected stuff so I thought it was yeah a really great a great watch and it's worth it like you said as a movie to give it a watch and also joe's character is, is a lot of fun in it too <laughs> he's so young i feel like he did that movie was it right after season one or i want to say it was right after season one and i discovered it on that streaming platform to be which is free and I just entered it in, and I was blown away by how much I actually really enjoyed it. Even if Joe hadn't been in it, it's a really well-done movie. He just, you know, he's the cherry on the Sunday, basically. <laughs> so another film that I know he's been in but I haven't seen, and I was wondering if you had seen it, was that Death to 2020 movie on Netflix. Have you watched that? <laughs> I haven't, but I've watched clips from it, and it looks just freaking hilarious. Which... I know. I really need to watch oh. it. He looks He looks like, I think his character in there is, like, very obnoxious and, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like not likable, but I'm sure that I would like him anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just charming no matter what, even if he's playing a douchebag. Um, have you seen the movie he made um, a few years back, How to Be Alone? Is that the short film? That's or... the short film. Yes, yes, yes I did watch that, that. That was interesting. I saw that right after season three premiered. Um, it was a short project that he did with um, his then-girlfriend, 
who is also an actress. And I found it very weird, but very yes. interesting. And I thought it was a cool little project that they both worked on together. And I think it, the director was Kate. Um, I don't know how to say her last name. It's like Trefe or something like that. And she's one of the, she also works on Stranger Things. Oh, that's so cool. And she's the one that is, I don't know, maybe like the creative director or something for the play, the, the first shadow. So, so she was also involved in Stranger That's Things. That's really that cool. Movie. See, mm-hmm. I didn't know that. I found that so interesting and like just a cool little project. And like I said, his part isn't very big, but you get to see him in like doctor or nurse scrubs. Yeah, and yeah. It works, baby. <laughs> The other thing that I feel like he has done that is very entertaining are some of the commercials that he's been in. (laughs) Oh, my God. So I remember when it had to be after season two of Stranger Things when they had their thing with Domino's and they did a spoof off Ferris Bueller. Mm -hmm. I love that commercial so much. It's so entertaining. And then the Taco Bell commercial god, with... it looked like a real movie <laughs> megan i was it like did. oh my god <laughs> those are some really cool projects that i think he's done Just the it's very fries. dramatic like <laughs> it's a commercial for nacho fries guys but it's so like it's dramatic so well he like, goes away to a cabin to try to <laughs> forget about the nacho fries as one would you know i think that's why like everybody loves this guy so much is because he clearly doesn't take himself too seriously yeah and he seems like he's having like a blast doing whatever project it is but um i know he's done a lot of television work he did an episode of chicago fire he did um an episode of the show empire where i guess supposedly he does like freestyle rapping and it's it's Have a sight it? to be seen i've seen the actual clip yeah, and um, I guess he actually messed up, and, and that's kept, what they use. They yeah. kept it in it, anyways, and it's just so bad. But um, yeah, he definitely has a sense of humor, and like I said, even in the you know appearances, you know, let it be a talk show or let it be a convention, he just seems like he's just a riot to be around and just really laid back and easygoing. Just always, always, always seems to be having a blast. You know, I gotta say, his work coming up, I'm pretty mm-hmm. excited for. What about you? Yeah, lots of cool projects currently happening with Fargo, which we're not going to touch too much on Fargo today because we could go too far. We're like in it right now. <laughs> As we're recording this, eight episodes have been released. We have two more to go. He's got some upcoming movie projects that are exciting um and also we're not going to dive into it today because we don't have time but his whole whole music career and him as a musician is just super impressive and I think like you said kind of goes along with um you could tell he's just having a great time with Mm -hmm. the projects that he does and really chooses to do things that kind of make him happy yeah what are some upcoming things that you're excited about with Joe Keery? Well, like we said, you know, we won't get into it big time, but I absolutely love that he's on Fargo now. Some coworkers of mine got me because it's an anthology series. They got me to watch the first three seasons. I still got to watch season four. And if I had to recommend anything, I'd recommend season one. It's got Billy Bob Thornton in it, and it's just so well done. You don't have to have watched the movie from the 1990s, which is equally as brilliant. But um, he's in this, and he does such a good job playing the character of Gator, who's just kind of like a tool bag, but, you know, it's so complex. And I've been having fun talking about it with you every week that you know he's on a tv show that you can watch weekly yeah i know you're sad to see it end but it's it's got me hooked in right now for sure yeah me too i finished actually reading the book it's based off it's from the same author as jurassic park it's called cold oh. storage oh yes i and forgot that he was in that coming yeah, up yeah he wrapped it i want to say last spring and you know I'm not going to get too much into the plot because it might give a lot away, but it's about germ warfare. Warfare? Warfare. There we go. Yep. Okay. Is it Liam Neeson? 
He's exactly. in it. Yep. It's got like this stacked cast. And I've read the book and he does. He plays actually really interesting character. Um, I'm really excited to see him in that. I don't know when it's going to be released. I'm excited to see they release the American name to it. Finally Dawn. Yes. I'm glad we can say finally Dawn and not try to say the Italian name. Italian <laughs> name. Dear God, it's worse than me trying to say German warfare. I did learn a little bit of Italian when I lived there for a month in college, but uh, not enough to confidently. I know how to say head of the squash, Desta de Gusta, <laughs> and I'm heavily <laughs> Italian, and that's it. That's the extent. But um, yeah, I fa- finally Dawn looks like it's going to be really good where he's playing like a 1930s dreamboat actor that kind of like catches the eye of this extra who falls in love with him but i'm sure i'm not alone with when they showed because supposedly they're like filming this big sweeping epic like spartacus you know and he plays like he's playing a gladiator type character and between the hair length and just the bronzed body it it was right <laughs> when it's right guys it's right and this was yeah, right it's perfect <laughs> Ooh, chef kiss like that's supposed to be coming out i don't know if it's going to be in limited theaters or streaming but it's supposed to come out valentine's day and oh just i am just excited for the gladiator scene just alone so i'm yeah. sure it's going to be well, good. there's some scenes where he's like dressed to the nines and mm-hmm. like suit tux and that looks fun too just looks so (laughs) handsome and like i love that they're trying to do the thing that the girl's not you know your typical you know beauty queen and stuff but she's an extra and she falls for him and just the few little clips that we've been getting it looks like they have great chemistry so seeing him in a romantic lead even though i'm so glad he's taking all these complex interesting roles seeing him in this kind of movie i mean we're swooning over we're excited yeah no and and that had good i think reception at the film festival that it premiered at i think i read a couple things and people were saying that it it was a little long like Mm -hmm. it could have been a little shorter okay but otherwise it was good and that he his role was very well done and that he did a great job in it which i mean obviously we're not surprised yeah (laughs) he's gonna kick ass and take names We were really lucky this past week because the Marmalade trailer actually dropped, which is this independent, like, twisted heist love story that's going to be coming out with Kiri. And it looks downright adorable. I showed a few of my coworkers who aren't even fans of his, and they were like, this actually looks really good. It looks fantastic. It looks so weird, but, like, Mm -hmm. good (laughs) in, like, the best way. Um it it yeah i'm excited for that too and he's just been so busy lately project like, after project all of these things have been filmed in the time between season four yep. and now right so and i have to hand it to him that he's he's keeping busy i know that he's like moved to new york now um which is really a smart career move with his music and his acting um but i think he's going to be the kind of guy that's like you know Even though, you know, he seems very grateful for Stranger Things, but he doesn't want to just be known for being the pretty guy with the great hair, you know. He's taking these roles like in Spree and Free Guy and his new upcoming projects like Fargo. And I think he's trying to go against the grain a little bit, which is really interesting to show that this guy has range. Like, he actually can act really, really well. And at the same time, take these fun projects where he doesn't take himself too seriously. But um, it actually wasn't until last, I want to say maybe a year ago, January, February, that I did actually discover his music. And, you know, there's a ton of actors out there turned musicians and it could go either way. This guy has a set of pipes on him. Like he is actually a very talented songwriter, but a beautiful beautiful voice and i've only listened to his album decide which came out the year before and i gotta Mm -hmm. tell you megan like i really truly hope he does tour because yeah he is an incredible incredible singer and songwriter 
And he seems like he's a really fun performer. And I love live music. And I've seen some videos of his live performances. And it just looks like he's having a blast up there. So I know that we we would love to see him tour. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, the music is so cool. And I don't even know how to describe it. Kind of like electronic a little bit. like. And we'll talk more about it, I think, in a future episode. But it's got some good vibes. And oh, yeah, it's feel good music, which... I have to ask, what is your favorite? You can only pick one. What's your favorite song of his that he's done? Oh, well, I mean, I feel like it's like the most basic answer, (laughs) but I love End of Beginning. I mean, it's such a bop. (laughs) It really is. It's really a great song. I do love that. And I do love that you get to like hear him sing a little bit more because the, the way that his music is, he does a lot of cool like vocal stuff but it's not like very heavy heavy on like the lyrics yeah. and the singing um and i do feel like that song kind of gives you a little bit more of him singing yeah which um is cool yeah so i feel like we could continue talking about joe keery for all day long man <laughs> oh, it's our the rest of the day it's our favorite <laughs> subject yeah yeah, but I think we'll wrap it up for today because we're definitely going to be doing some more um, discussion um, in later episodes. I did want to tell a little story since it's related to Steve Harrington and I have, always have to tell my little school stories. I love so that. <laughs> I always talk to the kids about liking Stranger Things and I was talking to this class and a lot of them already knew, but I was like, yeah, my favorite show is Stranger Things. and And one of the boys was like, who's your favorite character and I obviously didn't miss a beat and said Steve Harrington (laughs) and this kid he's like of course it is all the girls love Steve Harrington (laughs) especially in season three (laughs) y'all I mean have you seen him in that uniform come on kid kid you're not wrong yeah (laughs) you are not wrong so now he keeps calling me the Steve Harrington fan I love that oh my god Anything else you wanted to share about um, Steve Harrington or Joe Perry? Um, So the funny thing is, um, I have a horrible track record, guys. I have about six or seven Stranger Things tattoos, um, all done by the wickedly talented Shane Murphy um, from Crown of Thorns tattoo. Shout out to Shane. And I have been dying to get a Steve Harrington tattoo for years. I first got a Billy tattoo, and when I got him, boom, he died in season three. I got him right before season three premiered, and I was like, oh, shit. Then I truly feel like I was the first person to ever get an Eddie Munson tattoo. I actually have technically two, three, three Eddie Munson tattoos, but my first Eddie Munson tattoo, I got it in between volume one and two. Boom, he died. So everybody kept going, Stacy, don't get a Steve tattoo. You're going to kill our boy. Well, I couldn't help it. And I ended up getting him. And it's him from Scoops Ahoy, guys. And it's one of it's two. It's so good. Thank you. I love this one. It's one of my favorite tattoos. And as soon as I got him, everybody was like, he's a dead man now. Like, if he dies in season five, Stacy, your curse will continue. It's your fault. It's my fault. <laughs> Are there any filming updates that we wanted to talk about? Well, you were telling me, didn't they begin filming recently? Is that true? Um, I believe so. So on January 5th, that was kind of the rumored day that um, filming was set to start. So that was just a few days ago when we're recording this. And um, we did get some photos of trucks unloading things at the high school. So it looks like production has begun. Historically, I think usually Stranger Things or Netflix or the Duffer Brothers put out some sort of either photo for the table Mm -hmm. reads or a video. So we're hoping that we get something like that soon to kind of like officially confirm that production for season five has begun. So that's what we're sort of waiting on there. Do you want to make a little shout out to, they don't have an Instagram or Twitter, but they do have an Etsy shop 
They're called burnt out candle. And what they do is they make these organic soaps, handmade soaps or, you know, candles and wax melts. And they have it based off different fandoms and they have a whole category for actually Stranger Things. So they have Will the Wise, they have Pass the Duchy, which I think is hilarious. Um, they have, I believe, um, like Puppet Master, meaning Eddie. Um, I think they even have an 11 one. But my favorite is the Damn Babysitter. And it's this beautiful wax melt. It's got glitter and red and blue, very season three-esque. And the best way to describe it is it doesn't smell like ice cream, but it's this sweet, almost cologne smell. And I literally have five wax melts going in my living room at all times. And my house just smells of this stuff because it smells so good, you know. And I try to give people like little blocks of it to melt because it just smells so well. And it's kind of like what you would imagine Steve Harrington to smell like. Just really clean and, you know, sweet. So I have to give them a huge shout out. Burnt Out Candle on Etsy. If you guys are looking for a unique gift, they're really reasonable. I think maybe a wax melt might be under $5. Um, get a whole brick of them. But amazing, amazing stuff for any hardcore Stranger Things fan. That's so much fun. I love that. Let's do a little rapid fire. I think you have some questions. I do. For me. I do, darling. All right. Favorite comedic moment in all four seasons. Go. Oh, 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 okay. Okay. So Steve and Robin interviewing at Family Video at the end of season yes. three. Yes. Classic. And that Maddie, Maddie, whatever his name is, um, that plays um what's his name? What's Keith. his name? Keith. Keith. He is hilarious. So good. And I think he's in is he in season one? He's in season two at the arcade. And it's funny because I don't know if you know, the arcade and family video are right next to each other. Yep. In the show and in real life. And I've been there. That's one of the filming locations that I went to. I love and I don't that. think I realized before going there that they were right next to each other. But you do see when Robin and Steve pull up to family video that the arcade is right there also. Yeah. So at the end of season three... They pull up to family video and have to go in and have a little quick interview with Keith um, to try to get a new job since their scoops ahoy burnt place down, of yeah. employment burnt down. <laughs> um, but that's a little connection to Joe Keery and his projects because Maddie has a little cameo in Free Guy. Do you remember oh, that? Oh, yeah. I forgot it about that. It is hilarious so because good. it's like we didn't really talk too much about what Free Guy was about, but it's like a a video game mm -hmm. um so maddie is playing the gamer and his character in free guy is channing tatum <laughs> <laughs> so it's like maddie um controlling channing tatum and so it's good. just absurd and the most hilarious cameo i think that i've ever seen in a movie but that interview and we've mentioned that before because it's like Steve saying Return of the Jedi is his favorite. Yeah. Because it's the one with the one with the teddy bears. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely my favorite comedic kind of moment. In that the show. is a fantastic answer. I love it. What that. about you? I would have to say, and I know I've mentioned it before, but it's that long shot of Erica and Dustin looking down during Back to the Future. And it's just Steve and Robin eating the trash popcorn and her going, what's going <laughs> on? Him going, I have no idea. Just so subtle, but it sums up how high they are. Or definitely when um, Steve is like, when Dustin goes, have you done any drugs, Steve? And he's like, I told you, Dad, I don't do drugs. Just marijuana. Just marijuana, Dad. <laughs> oh, he kills me. I'm telling you. Thank God for Steve season three. Plenty of comedic uh, relief. All right. Here's my next one. Favorite song used in the entire series? You can only pick one. Oh, gosh. Um, that's hard because I have a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so I know um, in season four, 
master of puppets gets like you know all the credit but um the journey like remix oh that God. they did separate like, ways is it separate ways yep. worlds apart um it's so good so and, epic like it's a specific version that they made for the show mm -hmm. and for the soundtrack and it's just like the epitome of like we're going into battle and like yeah just in the show it's like so cinematic and beautiful and i can just like listen to that song and be transported back to that like moment because it's it's at the end of it's at the end of papa i just have like visceral memories of watching volume two because it was the beginning of summer it was like july right so we always have like thunderstorms in july yeah where i live and um there was this huge thunderstorm while Ooh. I was watching it. And I had watched it. I Did it come out on a Friday? I think it came out I on a Friday. I believe it did, yeah. Right? So I think I was, I had watched the first episode, Papa, on Friday night. And I just made myself just watch that because I Ooh. wanted to wait until like the next day to watch yeah. the second episode. So I had watched papa and like ended with that like moment like they're all going into battle and it was mm -hmm. like just such an epic way to like end that episode and then i made myself wait until the next day to watch this the last episode and there was this huge thunderstorm outside while i was watching like the whole master of puppets like it it was like Dude. an immersive experience i was gonna say wow <laughs> like i think it changed like my brain chemistry <laughs> Like thunder, lightning, like the power kept flickering. Like I was there. <laughs> that is incredible. What about you? I mean, I have to say it's probably a toss up between Master of Puppets, because that was just brilliantly used, and Running Up That Hill, which I know that yes. was kind of the song of 2022. And some people were a little annoyed with how much it was played, but I think it's a beautiful song. Kate Bush is awesome. And I think that song, like that scene with Max, wouldn't have been as impactful had it not been for that song. All right, I got one last one. Uh, I'm going to say it was actually a two part uh, question, but I'm going to actually just do the first part for this episode and we'll save the other one for another one. Um, all right, favorite first episode of a season. Which season do you think had the greatest first episode season four is my season choice. four welcome to hell fire club episode yeah yeah that's yeah. i mean it's like my second favorite episode of the whole season so yeah that's my I answer just as love, well yeah yeah i love eddie um in that episode and yeah yeah yep but it's dark. It set the, you know, bar for what we were about to dive into. And I think yeah. just you know, the basketball and the D&D &D scene so well done and introduced new characters without it feeling out of place. But no, I agree. That's one hell of a first episode. Yeah. So Okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm I know you said we were going to save it, but is the second part of the question favorite last episode? of the season yep. because I do I want to talk about that so. all right so favorite last episode which mine would be season three yes yeah no Good one. is that what you were gonna say that was <laughs> battle of star court I think that was up until um massacre at Hawkins lab and the piggyback I think that is one of the greatest final episodes in television in general yeah so battle of yeah. star court yeah, absolutely. That's mine too. And I think it fits in this episode because I love Steve in that episode. Oh, so good. Um, wait, isn't doesn't he he takes the car, right? Yeah. And he's <laughs> what does he say? Steve's your daddy now. And they're yeah. like, What? Todd the Todd father. The Todd father. Yep. That that episode though, it's just it feels like a movie. It's so action packed. There's so much going on. So much emotion, but uh, Battle of Star Court, I was like, wow, this show is on a whole new level with this one. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I love that episode so much, too. Okay, so I think we're just going to go ahead and wrap it up now. So, perfect. Just a reminder to find us on social media at Skull Rock Broadcast, pretty much everywhere. 
and let us know what you think. Let us yes. know what your favorite things that we've talked about so far have been, anything that you wanted to chime into the conversation about, and anything you would like us to talk about in the future, because we would love to get your input on on that and kind of build the community around this podcast because mm -hmm. we love talking to each other about it but we yeah want to bring everyone else in and kind of make this this journey that we go on together it means a lot that you guys are tuning in and listening and geeking out with us about this amazing show yeah absolutely so we will talk to you next time thanks so much for listening bye bye We are back. We are. <laughs> it's what are we really talking over. about today, Miss Megan? Yeah. So I just like, want to remind everyone, just in case you didn't listen to our first episode, because hopefully you're listening to these in order, but I know sometimes people just jump in kind of yeah. if there's a topic that they're interested about. So maybe you listen to this episode because you love Joe Keery, like us, and mm -hmm. you haven't listened to the first three episodes. So this is our little secret segment. It basically should be called the secret study segment, Ooh. I think. <laughs> a little alliteration there. Mm. Um, but our secret segment is where we kind of dive into the fan fiction aspect yeah. of how we enjoy interacting with the show. And we know that that's not for everyone. Um, so if you are more of the traditional canon just talk about the show and you don't really want to interact with the fan fiction absolutely valid it's kind of a different way to interact with media so we know that's not for everyone so we kind of do this segment separately so that you can turn us off now we're done um but if you do want to listen in on our conversation about fan fiction and what we're reading you can keep listening so yep. that's where we are um do you want to talk about anything that you've read in the past week? Um, I believe I said in the last episode I did finish up uh, Mushy Stuff, which is from that incredible writer uh, Pizza Bones. So I was thrilled to find that out. And then I reached the last episode, yeah, the last episode, the last chapter of the I've carved a place in your life the one where Steve is a uh, single dad and it's from O Stars and they haven't updated since November but I'm staying hopeful that they will return back to it so those are the two fix I'm currently reading yeah what are you currently reading yeah, so I'm reading a couple of things. So one that I wanted to mention that I started it's just a one shot it's not long but it's I've been getting through it the past couple of days because I haven't been reading a lot but it's a new one by Great Unironic and it's called They're Going to Send Us to Prison for Jerks <laughs> <laughs> so it's definitely a little bit of a crack thick like not like serious drama you need like a little break once in a while mm -hmm. um, but it's the author of the most remarkable thing about you standing in the doorway is that Ooh. it's you and we haven't talked about that one yet, and it's one of my all-time favorites. It's probably top three, and it's my favorite rock star Eddie kind of AU yeah. because um, Eddie is a rock star in that one, and it's it's one of the fix where they don't get together right away. Okay. And sometimes that breaks my heart because mm -hmm. it's like all that lost time that yeah. they didn't get together, but... It's worth it because it's kind of like worth the wait, I think. And like, yeah. um, I don't want to spoil anything too much, but it's it's amazing. And it's one it's it's like a story that like I feel like if I was going to tell someone like what to read 
to get into this, I definitely mm-hmm. recommend that one because I feel like okay. it's just so well written and you could read it even if you had never seen the show and had didn't really know these characters. I feel like you would still enjoy the story of yeah. that fic. So, and they have um kind of like Rolling Stone articles, like there's like newspaper articles. It's like very, again, well researched and well put together um, the way that they did that. And there is a pod fic, a really great pod fic version of that too that I've okay. listened to. Um, so highly recommend that story, that author. I started another one of their series that's not steady, but it's um, Joyce and Hopper. So a little yes. bit of a Jopper storyline. And um, the the first story in the series, I started it because someone I know did a pod fic of it. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that they continue with the series. But it's the first one is called Leave the Children Behind. And it's the Eating in the Underworld series. And okay. I really want to dive in deeper to that series, too, because it's um, Joyce goes to find Hopper in Russia. And it turns out that Steve is with Hopper. Um, because in this AU, Steve, they thought, died at Starcourt mm-hmm. as well as Hopper. So when she finds that Hopper finds out that Hopper is still alive, she goes to get him just like she does in season four. But she finds that Steve is there with him, too. So Interesting. They, they and Hopper has kind of taken Steve like under his wing. And it's just like very cathartic to get see Steve get to have them basically as parents oh my god um, i love that because <laughs> it's just kind of healing i think <laughs> so i'm really excited about those stories and we're super excited because we have not read it yet but maureen Barry's just dropped new chapter of sneaky link mm-hmm. so we're definitely going to be reading that soon um so and i pumped. think we've mentioned sneaky link a few times but we haven't talked about um what it's about so it's a modern au where the guys are in college um Mm -hmm. and steve is a content creator (laughs) yes yeah that's one way to put it yep i'll just let you figure out what kind of content steve creates um use your imagination yeah Yeah. some some antics ensue (laughs) with that um but it's funny because the they're going to send us to prison for jerks is similar more it's it's not an au is it an au Uh, yeah i I guess it's an au it's an au for sure and Mm -hmm. it's later so it's um eddie is older he's like graduated from college and everything and he's still in touch with like his friends from corroded coffin okay. and um he's a tiktok person Ooh, okay and he's obsessed with this other tiktok person and it's cool because the author like links the the actual two tiktoks that inspired the tiktoks that these like personas for yeah. Steve and eddie are like based on oh my God, so it's like that. It, it's it's really great and it's hilarious and it's a lot of like texting mm. which I, I we've got that in sneaky link yes. too like the texting so it's it's a lot of fun um so those are the ones that i'm kind of reading right now but i did want to do a little shout out for a project that i'm working on um okay. that by the time this is out it will be finished and released so the fic is called mixed emotions and it's one of those mixtape fix where Ooh. the guys make mixtapes for each other. Oh my um, god, I love that. But I'm currently working with some other people to make a pod fic of the fic. That's so exciting. it's it's short. It's gonna be maybe 30 minutes total for yeah. this fic. But what we did was we got all of the music because the way that the author did it was they included like the track titles mm-hmm. and um for each of the mixtapes there's like 14 songs and they they picked like some lyrics from the song to kind of like okay. give you an idea of like what the um vibe of that song was so we took the clips of the songs with those lyrics and it's kind of like you get to listen to the mixtape that's so as cool. they're listening to it oh um, my God. so i'm working on that i read eddie's part and nice. I also helped um, do the music for Eddie's mixtape. And 
it is like the best Eddie playlist that I think I've ever seen in a fic. Uh, and okay. I'm gonna actually making link. I'm gonna I'm making the playlist too and I'll share awesome. them for Apple Music and Spotify. Yeah. Steve play Steve's playlist is very good also, but it's like Steve's playlist is all songs I already knew I liked. Yeah. But Eddie's playlist is like metal. You and I'm not a stuff. huge metal person, yeah. but I'm like, I love these songs and I like keep listening to this playlist over and over again. Yeah, it's been really fun. And I'm also like working on like the editing of the pod thick to like put everything together. Oh, so, so it's cool. been super fun. I'm really excited for it to be finished. Um, and I'm excited for everybody to listen to it. So hopefully, um, if you have not already, because I'm sure I'll share it on social media when I finish it. But if you have not already checked that out, please do, because it's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. That sounds really, really cool. I can't wait. So I think that's all I have for today. All right. So I guess we'll wrap it up. I'm sure it's very clear that Megan and I love us some Joe Keery, but there's a lot of cool projects that are in the works. And um, like I said, I cannot wait to listen to more of your pod fix. Thanks. Thank you. Um, all right. Super fun talking to you today. We are signing off. So we will talk to you next time. All right. Over, Over and out. And out.